I started with virtual reality three years ago with my first VR documentary, Clouds Over Cedra, that I made with the United Nations in partnership with Chris Milk's company Within and Here Be Dragons. Or back then it was Burst and Burst Works. That's a great, that's a great, that's a great question. Uh, I'm an alumni of Johns Hopkins University myself. Um, uh, the, you know, most, most sort of university setups are very bureaucratic and stuck in their traditions. Uh, Johns Hopkins Film and Media Program is about two years old. So it doesn't have the kind of uh, storied legacy of, let's say, NYU, which I'm also an alumni of, or USC or all the other like film and media schools. So they're really looking to experiment and they're really, you know, allowing um, for something new to happen that wouldn't happen otherwise. So I think that was a big part of it. But part of it was I only wanted to do something, especially after my years of working at the UN on my vulnerable populations and issues. I said, I'm only going to do this program if it's going to be majority women and people of color. Um, I don't ever want to just be a part of something that's going to further the inequality of the world. Sometimes I do do that, you know, but I, in general, want to avoid that on an institutional basis. So we made um, a commitment that the program already and its existence with 35 students is um, about 70 to 80 percent women and people of color. And I said, as long as we can always have that over 50 percent, I will be a part of it. Uh, because I just think that's what we need to do. We need to nurture future leaders. We need to make it more affordable. Uh, the program is a third of the cost of schools like NYU because of you know the way it's you know um, the way it's structured and the way we want to make it more affordable, relatively affordable. Let's just say that, right? It's still not. It's still an American world class private university in the United States uh, that's not going to be accessible to everyone. But we're going to make a lot of efforts uh, on it. Uh, the program director, Roberto, is, is Puerto Rican. He makes an incredible effort to go into diverse communities, to do open houses, to let people know that they can actually do something in tech, that they shouldn't feel intimidated, that they can be filmmakers, that there can be a possibility for careers, you know? And so to me, that is why um, this particular program in university uh, really spoke to me and why I'm proud to be a part of it. The immersive, so we had that on October 7th to launch the new concentrations, and we made it open to the public of Baltimore. So there was about 150 people that came that were prospective students, that were entrepreneurs, that were community leaders, that were philanthropists in Baltimore, that, you know, were able to, and also from the Johns Hopkins, you know, broader community, because so much of this program and so much of VR, as you know, has to be interdisciplinary. Right. So we want to make sure that this program is not only going to be serving like just film and documentary needs, but also be dealing with health care, also be dealing with foreign policy. So we also have another program that we're launching in partnership with the medical school, uh, Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, which basically is working with VR, with autism and uh, trying to figure out how we can do brain scanning and VR in MRI machines. And it's a technological challenge. It's an engineering challenge also with, you know, making headsets that can't be metal and going into these types of environments where brain scans are done. So we're really looking, that, that sort of summit, that sort of conference was to launch this, to communicate this, but also show that we're not just going to be within the university, that we're going to engage with the city of Baltimore. So we were able to bring uh, Tigal Nasima from Superbright, Graham Sack, who made Lincoln in the Bardo. We had Yelena Rachinsky from Oculus. We had Jessica Brilhert, who was formerly with Google. We had myself. We had Barry Kausman with Barrio Labs doing VR training. We basically had the who's who, I think, of people doing different things in VR that can actually bring it for people. And I remember, you know, Yelena was there, and she's a good friend, and she was like, I've done so many of this, and it feels like this is the first time I was doing it for real people. You know, it wasn't it wasn't inside baseball for the industry. I'm sure that's important too, but I think it was more important, I think, to really connect with people uh, and to make sure that we're we're serving the community in some ways. The school right now has about 35 students, um, and the 
enrollment is open for this concentration. The first course will start in January, which I'm teaching. Um, and it's like a foundations and immersive storytelling and emerging technologies. And it's going to basically be a little bit in the same way where we're going to um, do a lot of case studies, have the students make their own projects like Freedom Fighter, you know, was with different advisors. We'll have different experts coming in. And so it's going to be very practical. Um, so if people go to jhufilm.com, they can do the application, which is due at the end of the year, to start in January. And we're looking, uh, you know, it depends on what kind of interest we get. Uh, we're looking, we've just opened up sort of enrollment. So depending on how many people we have, uh, we want to cap each course between 15 and 20 people. Um, and so if there is more interest, then we would try to have other classes that we could offer and we could think of what we could do. But, you know, it's a whole new world of how we would see what kind of interest we would get, what kind of commitment it is. It is a two-year master's program, you know, uh, and so that's what people would be signing up for. It's 10 courses um, to graduate to get your MA, and that takes about, in, ge in general, that takes about two years to do. Um, so that it is about 4000 approximately $4,000 a course. So for the total two years, it would be between with, you know, just tuition and maybe some books between 40 and $50,000. Now, a similar course at NYU from online and everything, it's about $60,000 a year for tuition. If you look at the world ranking, I think it's number 11 in the world, maybe number 13, one of the, the top universities in the world. So it was a challenge to make uh, a top university have a competitive price. I know it's not um, as affordable as, as it would be for most people, but we are going to look in to try to have fellowships going forward. But where I think there's another incentive is we're funding projects, right? So Laura's project was funded. Uh, so she was able to not only... Um, you know, go to school, but have an AR project that would be in her name, uh, working with some of the top people. And as you know, building an AR app is expensive. Uh, you know, uh, building VR stuff is expensive. So we're hoping, you know, that we can kind of like subsidize projects. And, you know, even within that, there can be a director's fee or there can be something. You know, we're going to hustle to try to make this happen. But we are going to hopefully after the first year, depending, I mean, if we are able to attract a lot of students and we're able to generate revenue, right, because at the end of it, it's an entrepreneurial activity also, you know, working in academia. If we're able to get a good amount, then we can look to try to get, make a bigger case to get these sort of scholarships funded. Yeah, that's a great that's a great question and a really good point. And I feel ashamed that I didn't, you know, we haven't we haven't made that outreach in the same way. And I think it's something I'm going to note and think about more. Um, I'd be, I think we were just, you know, trying. You're right. Diversity should be much more than, you know, gender and race. It should be ability. And there are all these other things. Um, and I think that's something that um, uh, I'm going to look more into and see how we can kind of figure out a way to do something meaningful in that way. Um, thank you for that. Thank you. I, I mean that. I mean, I could have just, I, I could just give you my talking point and be like, yes, we will. And of course we are, you know. Uh, but, you know, it just shows you the blind spots we have. You know, we all have those. I have my, you know, I'm a dude. I'm like able, I go around, you know. So, you know, I think we're, we're trying. And I think that's a very, very, very good point. And I know this is not the point of the interview for you to teach me stuff, but, <laughs> but you've taught me something where now I'm going to be like, wait a minute, Roberto, what is it that we're doing here? Because we need to at least figure out that we are actually compliant, you know, with making sure that we're not intimidating. It's an intensive effort, but it's still, um, it's still part time. And, uh, you know, it's still something that, you know, at the, at the core of it, I'm a, a creator, uh, I'm an entrepreneur. But, you know, academia, to me, um, is, is interesting because I think there's so much. One, I, I've i taught before at NYU, and, you know, I, I have I have a background in, in teaching as well when I, was, when I was younger. I think there's just so much energy 
um, in young people where I think the industry might be waffling, you know, and like there's going to be like all these problems with commercials and the headset. But, you know, you, you, there's a real demand and a real boom in academia of young people wanting to learn this because I think they've realized that hopefully by the time they come out of their master's, there's more jobs. Um, and I think there will be. And I think they're smart enough to understand that they have the interesting ideas and interesting ways we can do it. So it just has really energized me, and I think it's a way to really inform my own work and, and to really have it also be a pipeline for talent, right, if not for 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 working in, in, in companies that I'm a part of, but companies that other people are part of that you can connect them to in the industry in that way. Not yet in, in what I've, I've kind of built. Um, it's something that um, perhaps I'm a little bit more classical, you know? I'm a little bit more focused right now on, um, on you know, there's like Game Engine Camp, and then there's like, you know, building for, you know, in building with artificial intelligence. Like we're trying to just build something with a lot that's very high skills based. And I, I, I understand the importance of marketing and all that stuff, but I, I'm still trying to build something a little bit more rigorous on um, on, on the skill set part of it. That is something that, because I, I, I'm not going to downplay um, being able to do that, but I just feel like that's something that maybe we could have as a workshop or something of that sort. But I'm not dedicating uh, necessarily semester time for that. Uh, I think hopefully we can build up mentorships. We can do other things where people can give them that advice. I think it's important, but I really am still at the core of it. Um, also, I went to Johns Hopkins, and uh, maybe it's my own bias. It was just an, in, it, it's an incredibly classical, rigorous school. And so I'm trying to kind of impart things that I think could not be imparted elsewhere and, and really allow for a lot of heavy skill building in that way. Hopefully we start January with, you know, some very excited students and some good numbers and we really appreciate you getting the word out to get us an ability to let us let people know why this is different, why this is newsworthy, you know? This is not advertising, you know. We're not trying to advertise it. We're trying to do something that is worthy of it being in the news with its new approach and with projects that I think are cutting edge that haven't been done before. So that if we continue to do that, hopefully we'll be good and people will, will realize that you know something special is going on here. Okay. Thank you, Nita.